Hello, everybody. I'm Emily from KCR Community Resources, and I have Cindy with me today. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Emily. Good morning. It's so good to be here. I'm uh, Cindy Sapiano, and I am with the Okanagan Foster Parent Association here in Kelowna. And uh, yeah, it's good to be here. So you have lots of questions for me today. I do have lots of questions. Are you okay. ready? I hope so. Okay, so okay. tell me a little bit about your organization. Okay, so Okanagan Foster Parents Association has been around since um, about 2002, and we kind of came into existence due to a need to restructure support and education services mm -hmm. for family care homes. Just to define a family care home, a family care home really is a home that has a contract with the Ministry of Children and Family Development, which essentially is a foster home. And so our contract is with the Ministry of Children and Families, and we provide support and education services to foster parents throughout the Okanagan. Now, I coordinate the Central Okanagan, which is the area from Peachland to Lake Country, mm -hmm. but also within our organization, we have three other coordinators that also have the same position as I do, and they coordinate areas from Summerland down to the border, and then we also have a coordinator in the north who has the Vernon area, and then we have one in the Shushwap Enderby area as well. Oh, wow. So there's, there's four of us, so we cover uh, this area of the province to support families that... Uh, um, are taking care of, of children in care. Wow, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what types of volunteer opportunities are available for your organization? Well, really, what we are looking for is foster parents. Mm -hmm. We are looking for families who are interested in helping a child or a youth or children, more than, more than one, mm -hmm. um, who just need a place to, to live for a time being. And when I say families, we're looking for, you could be a two-parent family, you can be a one-parent family, a single parent, you can be a retired couple, you can be a same-sex couple. We are just really looking for people who just love kids and are willing to support children and youth for a time being when they're not able to stay at home. Mm. So what? how do volunteers make an impact on your organization then? Oh my gosh. Well, um, for families who are interested in fostering, when they get involved in that, I mean, it's, it's funny, they change a child's life. Mm -hmm. They give children and youth an opportunity for them to have a safe place to live, for them to, um, to go to school, to be involved in different kinds of activities that maybe they wouldn't have had a chance to. But the funny thing is, what I often hear, and from my own experience as somebody who used to be a foster parent, is it changes the foster parent's life sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I shouldn't say as more as, but just as much as it changes uh, the child's life. Yeah, because uh, many people, I mean, you know, you become family. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes even um, some foster parents even choose to move forward and adopt the children. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty neat. It's pretty uh, warm and fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're creating family. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's wonderful. And I'm wearing this necklace because it's a uh, starfish, okay. which really signifies uh, making a difference. Hmm. Yes, because every starfish makes a difference. So this is kind of our our logo, so to speak. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so as for volunteers, are you looking for any volunteers with specialized skills? I know you mentioned that it can pretty much be anybody, but mm -hmm. what types well, of skills or things like that? Do you well, absolutely. Um, if you can well imagine, sometimes some of the children that need a place to uh, live for a period of time, sometimes they may come with some uh, developmental needs, mm -hmm. some kind of uh, behavior challenges. So certainly um, for children that might need a little extra supervision or a little extra care, if a volunteer has some kind of experience, even just raising your own kids <laughs> mm -hmm. is experience in itself. But, you know, if you have some kind of experience or skill level, certainly that's helpful, mm -hmm. but it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, we have babies too, you know, and you don't necessarily need to um, have, you know, high skill level when it comes to uh, 
um, you know, taking in um, a baby and loving on a baby. Mm -hmm. So with that said, um, you know, we do have people that come forward that aren't even, um, you know, that ever been parents yet. Yeah. And so um, certainly if you have some skill level, that's great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, and one thing I do want to say is that not foster parenting isn't necessarily for everybody. Mm -hmm. So as far as volunteer opportunities go, sometimes you can support behind the scenes as well. If okay. you don't feel like um, bringing a child in your home is really going to fit for you and your family, then there's other things such as uh, um, planning social events. Now, mm -hmm. of course, our so social events are virtual, yes. but in uh, the future. planning social events, of course. Um, putting together baskets, care baskets, or, um, you know, organizing a raffle, or putting posters around the town, you know, letting people know mm -hmm. that we need um, foster parents, administration stuff, such as, you know, some really fun Facebook or uh, social media posts and creating posts and uh, working on the website. So there's lots of different administration and fun things that you can do on the side that uh, if you feel that you know, that's a place that you could see yourself fit rather than um, with the foster parenting, then that's always an opportunity too. Okay. So, I mean, obviously for a foster parent, the commitment is full time. It's not just hours per week. Yes. But for those other types of volunteers, like the poster hangers and the social media helpers, is it weekly or is it just by demand or how many hours per week? Well, that's an interesting question because I was trying to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say it's probably more on demand, but okay. really, if anything, um, certainly because there are some needs right now um, that I can sure. see um, as far as uh, social media, website, uh, those kinds of things. And I'm thinking maybe two hours a week, maybe okay. 10 hours maximum a month. So it's not a huge commitment, but, um, and it's something you can do at home, you know, on your own, but of course still have communication with uh, myself or other mm -hmm. people within the organization. So, uh, so it's not a huge commitment, but if it's something that somebody would enjoy doing and uh, you know, in the background, you're still supporting children and families Definitely. and uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, that's a good thing. So yeah. So I think that's about, yeah, about 10 hours. Okay. Um, I also want to ask you if it's okay. So for a foster parent, is there training or any resources before you can take in a child or how does that work? Oh my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's just like when you have your own child, <laughs> Okay. You know, you just kind of, you're not just kind of thrown into things. Um, so yes, we do have, uh, uh, there is a process, there is training that is offered. Uh, we have pre-service training, which is offered in the beginning, and then in-service training, which is offered a little bit later down the road. And that training is offered through, again, MCFD, which is the Ministry of Children and Family Development. Um, there is a process to get started. And if a, if a person is interested in getting started, the first thing they do is attend what's called an info session okay. and that gives them a place to answer lots of questions um, ask lots of questions and get all the information about the process and how you apply you can um, uh, yeah pretty much get the skinny from beginning to end now normally those info sessions are held monthly in person, but of okay. course that mm -hmm. has changed. Yeah. So if you are interested, just let me know and then I can make sure to get you set up and and it may not be with a group of people, it may be more one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one, okay. but you would you know, leave with all the information that you need to uh, move forward with the process and the training, okay. absolutely. And training is ongoing. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it's not just you do the one training session and then suddenly you have this child and you don't know, you still have those resources throughout the whole thing. Absolutely. There is a certain training um, component that you do need to complete, but that's part of my job as well is to provide education and workshops and support all along the way. So yes, okay. so there's always resources and, and it, we, as a matter of fact, we have a workshop on Wednesday, tomorrow, okay. Wednesday, yeah, on <laughs> FASD, fetal alcohol syndrome. So that's, mm. uh, so we have lots of that stuff that we okay. organize. So yeah, it's ongoing. Okay. 
So either way, if I wanted to be a foster parent or if I wanted to just volunteer, you said to contact you? Yes, absolutely. You can contact me. Um, Well, you can, um, I guess you could phone me, which is 250-870-8991. Okay. Or you can email me, and this it's a long email address. Okay. <laughs> it is COK, which is short for Central Okanagan, COK support at okfosterparents.ca. Okay, perfect. We can have it appear yes, on the so screen. So you can email. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Or call, and uh, uh, or certainly you can go to our website, okfosterparents.ca, and um, yeah, and then you'll get me somehow, some way, okay, and uh, yeah, it'll all be good. And yeah, I'd love to um, chat with um, So Cindy, is there anything else you would like an interested volunteer to know about your organization? Well, um, what I think about first is children and youth. And there are many children and youth within our community, within the Okanagan, that um, for a variety of different reasons, aren't able to be at home. Uh, Sometimes um, parents might be struggling with addictions. Sometimes we've had single parents come in and they've gotten ill with cancer and aren't able to care for their children. I mean, there's a variety of reasons why, but we have kids and youth that need a family in our community. And we have, I mean, we live in such a beautiful place and we have so much here. And um, so really it's, um, if you're able to open your heart and open your home to a child or a youth that needs a place to go um, and live and kind of integrate into your family, then um, I just encourage you to uh, contact me because not only does it change the life of the child and the youth, but it does. It changes you and mm-hmm. your family. So um, yeah, just just to encourage people to call um, okay. and ask questions and yeah. So oh. so thank you. No, thank you, Cindy. That was awesome. Have yeah, a good day. that was fun. Thank you. <laughs> you too.